LLP in that we are a separate company. Uh, we will continue to be separate. We'll have our own separate board that will oversee our business just as AELP will continue to, to operate the way they do. Uh, in its simplest form, we're just switching basically thousands of shareholders in a publicly traded uh, company with one shareholder. That being the real one. So we see, a, we see a, a lot of benefit. But the story here is not, so, it's not just about growing the business, it's about how we want to do business. And so when we looked at this transaction, again, we found a company that had a very diverse set of assets in multiple um, states, doing very good things for those communities. Um, and, you know, hence, knowing that there was the potential for consolidation, which would be the right partner to come in and continue to build on the good work that was being done. Our intention with this, and you asked a good question about what are the efficiencies that can be gained. Uh, our intention with this is not to come and change the way Avista and AEL and P is doing business. If anything, we want them to continue the good work that they're doing. And through the investment that we're bringing in, we have a very strong balance sheet. We hope that that can get better and stronger, and that those investments in communities can grow. So it's not an intention of coming in and moving head offices and moving jobs out and so on and so forth. Quite the opposite. We'd like to see that grow. We'd like to see more jobs created. We'd like to see other things happen. Um, the synergies, or if you will, the efficiencies that we see come from this are more around now, just to put it in simple terms, as we come together, you know, we have a very large base in Ontario with 650,000 square kilometers of territory we cover. Don't ask me to do the conversion <laughs> miles. Um, but it's a lot of space. Uh, territory very similar to this, not as mountainous, but terrain that's very rugged. Uh, transmission towers, distribution towers. We have 1.3 million poles in the province. Uh, we have 1.3 million customers. So we say for every customer, every customer has a pole and a bit. Um, that's what we serve. Where you can get now economies of scale by bringing this transaction together is things like purchasing power. Together we're going to be buying insulators, wire, poles, towers. Um, we're using very similar, uh, if not the same, con um, um, suppliers in many cases and buying transformers and so on. There's the opportunity now to synergize on how we actually have that purchasing power. There's an opportunity for us to gain efficiencies on platforms uh, that are IT related. Um, perhaps even with uh, systems, metering, uh, expertise. Uh, there's intellectual property that can be shared now across the two uh, companies um, that would benefit AEL and P as well. So that's where we actually saw some real strength. And you know, we can do the math here around how steep the history is here. We've got 100 plus years here, 100 plus years here with the Vista, you have 100 plus years with Hydra One. Uh, all the companies have a tremendous amount of expertise in how they string conductors, how they do construction, how they service, how they maintain and, and issue capital, um, how they manage a capital envelope. We think that will bring great value to customers. And in the end, we'll run an efficient business that's going to be a benefit to shareholders as well. When the transaction for the sale of the Sunshine Project from the federal government to the state government took place, there were just there's a series of carefully crafted um, agreements that really protect the benefits of Sendisham for Juno. So it, it, there's contractual, precedential um, obligations in place, and and so that none of that is affected whatsoever by the merger. So it wasn't affected by Avista acquiring us, and it's not affected by Hydro One acquiring Avista. So <coughs> protections are in place. Um, I've heard people talk about monetizing the asset; it's just not possible uh, for that to happen. The agreements will preclude it from happening, and. The regulatory commission is um, has stated, uh, for one thing, that this uh, issue is outside the scope of the docket. But of course, we still want to, you know, to calm people's fears about it. So even though it's outside of the of the docket itself, just people need to know that the folks that put those agreements together back in 1998 did a fantastic job. And um, so the benefits of of Sedisham are protected and preserved for the community of Juno, and and none of that is going to be affected by by what's happening. And as far as the rate, you know, rates can't go up based on Hydro One. Um, the regulatory commission uh, is there. Our our rates are based on our costs, and our costs are not going to be affected by these guys, except to the extent, for example, you know, one of the things that you asked about was the efficiencies by by you know merging companies. When um, Avista acquired us, I had no idea that we would have this benefit, but we 
we combined our property coverage. We have a lot of property, right? So the poles and well, not everything. Insurers won't cover everything, but we have you know we have significant uh, amount of property that we have property insurance on. And just simply by combining our coverage with a business coverage, our customers are saving over five hundred twenty thousand dollars a year just right off the just by simply by combining. And so those savings go right through to the customer because our costs are recovered through rates dollar for dollar, no markup. So our rates will continue to be based on our costs and our, we don't have allocated overheads from Avista. It's not one of those things where you go, hey, you know, we have layers and each layer charges down to the layer below and they charge to the layer below them. And we don't have any of that. And we, what we have with these guys is um, the benefit of, of, like I said, that savings um, of over $500,000 a year. We have the benefit of calling on the expertise of their employees. So we have 62 permanent employees, and Avista has 1,800. Uh, you guys have 5,400, I think, permanent, plus like 17, right. 1,800 seasonal. Right. Um, so even though we pride ourselves on doing a good job, we don't have the expertise of every, you know, for 62 employees, we can't do everything. We can call on the expertise of, of the Vista, and so we have on, on areas like cybersecurity, um, uh, socks, you know, accounting, um, uh, electric vehicle. So it's and what happens is if we use their services, uh, they charge us for their time with no markup, and so really it's just a benefit to us because they're you know we have that expertise at our fingertips, and we're paying less than we would for a consultant to to provide it, and they're in the business and they know they know what they're doing really. So look at us and say, hey, since you guys were acquired by Avista, I can tell that you're different because of X, Y, or Z. So, um, so I would just stay back. I don't, know why, I don't know why people's fears aren't calmed um, to the extent that they're not calmed, but I would say that all of those concerns that people have now were at issue when Avista acquired us, and nothing bad has happened. I, I don't believe this community is anti-Canadian. Um, uh, you know, I think that maybe there's some misconceptions about who we are, and, and very much like the questions you've asked, which I think is natural. You know, um, you know, we don't. I don't take any offense to it. We don't take any offense to it. As a matter of fact, that's why we're here because we'd like to dispel any of those myths, mistruths about that. Um, and you know, I, I, I guess I'll leave you with this. You know, don't judge us, and don't judge me as a representative of Hydro One for what I say. Judge us by what we do, right? And I can tell you that there's nothing that I've said here today that we won't stand strongly committed to and give you that sort of commitment. Uh, and, I, and I hope that we can impart that to the community and to the citizens of Juneau, and I hope that we can impart that tonight at the, uh, at the town hall.